this lesson, we will see the two possible approaches to an animation, straight ahead and post to post. As the name suggests, straight ahead means to start to animate from the first key pose, adding all the other poses in sequence order. So we animate from the start to the end of the shot, going ahead, adding key poses, breakdowns, and all the other poses in between, one after the other. Post to pose means start adding just the key poses that are all the poses necessary to describe the action, the more significant poses. You don't have to follow a sequence order, but it's up to us. We can add the first and last key pose and then add the other in the middle, or we can choose to add them following an order. When we finish to create the key poses, we go back adding some breakdowns here and there where necessary to better with the action and have a more precise reference for the timing we will have in the final result. When we work in post to post, it's recommended to keep all the curves in stepped so that when we pass from a key to another, we don't have an interpolation, but we just skip from a pose to another. These two different techniques have a very different approach. When we animate straight ahead, the approach to the animation will be more instinctive. You will animate following your impulse. With the post to pose approach, you will plan the animation, concentrating on the key poses and the timing. In this way, you will immediately have the idea of the final result, even with few keys. If you are beginners, I suggest you to go for the post to pose animation. In general, it's the best way to start, and even I usually choose this approach, especially for complex and long animations. With straight ahead, you risk to over animate, adding too many movements, actions, and gestures to lose readability of the main poses, and you will have more difficulties to make changes or just adjust a bit the timing and the spacing in the animation. In production, when a supervisor have to look at your animation, it will be more difficult to tell you what to change and you will lose a lot of time doing these changes due to the high number of keys we have in a straight ahead animation. With post to pose, you avoid all these problems because your animation will be immediately readable in terms of poses, timing and intentions and you will be able to add variations and change stuff in few moves and proceed to spline and refine when you will be sure of what you are doing. So with these techniques, you will save time and you will focus on the more important aspects. Let's see an example. I will show you the same animation following these two approaches. First, let's see how we would create this animation with a straight ahead approach. As I said before, in straight ahead, we start from the first key pose and we proceed with all the other poses, key poses and breakdowns following the sequence order. So when we do this, we add as many keys as we want, just following our instinct. So we don't just focus on the main poses and the timing, but we already adjust the spacing and create the moving goals, the saddle, the offset of some parts. But as I said before, there's no rules. So you could also choose to go for a blocking approach in straight ahead and add the offset and the other little adjustments in a second time. The main difference with the post to pose is the amount of key poses and the sequence order we follow during our creative flow with all these poses one after the other without jumps in the timeline. This is the method I use sometimes when I work on easy and fast productions like TV series with simple characters and the majority of close up acting shots. So I directly animate the spline and going straight ahead because in these simple cases I save time because I don't pass from the blocking phase. But as I said before, I don't suggest you this method if you are beginners. So what I suggest you is to choose to animate in post to post first, keeping the tangents in stepped and let's see the example with the post to post. So first we go to create all the key poses or the extremes. So we start from the same starting key pose. The animation is the same of the other example, but we create just a few key poses. In this case, for example, we know that he starts sitting at the table and must finish out of the door. So we could create the first pose at the table and one close to the end with him opening the door. In this way, we set the timing. Uh, we know that in this range, we have to do all the other actions. So the head turn reactions and the step towards the door. After we create all the key poses, we have the main thing to evaluate if the shot works and if the case to proceed or change some poses or actions or the timing. In case everything is fine, we go to add some breakdowns, the passing poses between the key poses. So we go to decide how the character moves and reacts to reach the following poses and also the spacing. Based on where we put these breakdowns, we also decide the speed variations of the movements. So now with all the necessary key poses and breakdowns in Stapid, this shot will be ready to be seen by the supervisor and he will give you some simple tips to enhance it and will be very easy for you since you have few poses to manage. Same if it's a personal work and you want to check it more and more times before feel ready to proceed to the refine. Tip for the post to pose approach. Right now, one of my personal methods to create post to pose without adding too much key poses is to start creating the key poses in spline with no breakdowns. So in this way, we will have the softer interpolation between the key poses so I add the keys where I want my breakdowns. 
Now I have my key poses and some breakdowns created by the interpolation. And what I got to do is to change and adjust these poses as I want. Then I check if the movement is what I had in mind and at this point I switch the tangents in Stepped. In this way I can keep a low number of key poses and breakdowns to manage but decrease the chance to have some bad surprises in the refined step. When you will switch again your tangents from step to spline, the animation will already works pretty well. That's all for this lesson on the approach to an animation shot. Let's see you for the next one about staging. <music>